Hi, I'm Carl Azus, and this report's got soul. Or more accurately, I should say solstice. Because on June 21st, the summer solstice will be occurring in the Northern Hemisphere, while the winter solstice is happening in the Southern Hemisphere. Forgive me if I seem a little hot and cold on that subject. <laughs> The Earth upon which we live revolves around the Sun on a tilted axis. During the June solstice, the Sun is at its northernmost point over our planet. That gives people in the Northern Hemisphere their longest period of daylight, while people in the Southern Hemisphere are experiencing their shortest period of daylight. Ooh, ooh. What is it, Bobby? You know why I'm not ready for this year's solstice? Why, Bobby? Cause I didn't plan it. Get it? That's horrible, Bobby. What's interesting about these solstices is that even though they're said to be the longest or shortest days, depending on where you live, they're not necessarily the hottest or coldest days. Summer weather is generally hottest in the weeks after the summer solstice. Winter weather's generally colder after the winter solstice. Can any of you guess the term for why the coldest and warmest days usually occur after solstices? Is it Coriolis effect, seasonal lag, deflected radiation, or quiet, Bobby? But... Oh. The time it takes for Earth's temperatures to catch up to the heat of the sun, or lack thereof, is called seasonal lag. So just because America's amount of daily sunlight actually starts getting shorter after June 21st, the summer in many places is just heating up. I'm Carl Azus, reporting for sunlight. I mean, for sunlight, not sunlight. I mean, on sunlight, but not... Oh.